All right, are we ready to get going? I'm ready. All right, yeah. do it. Wow. Welcome. Yes? Pronto. Welcome. <laughs> okay, Richard, we'll get going now. <laughs> Welcome to Phillips Mill Art Talk. I'm your host, Laura Womack, and with me is our producer, Jen McHugh. Hi, y'all. When we're talking with artists, we often get caught up in technique, color, composition, and the many technical aspects of creating, creating art. And we love that. But sometimes uh, in the pursuit of how to create art, we forget about the why. And art is a form of communication after all. It's not just about pretty pictures, it's about the light on a certain day in our favorite nook or our partner's expression on a sleepy afternoon. Art is a way of seeing and sharing that vision with someone else and that communication can be the foundation of important relationships. Today, we're pleased to have with us two esteemed artists, Tom Chesser and Richard Lennox. They've been friends for decades after meeting at an art gallery, and they continue to meet in Tom's studio where they discuss art and probably lots of things besides. Tom earned a Bachelor of Science from Ryder University and has studied at the Fleischer Art Institute in Philadelphia, as well as at the Printmaking Council of New Jersey. He's exhibited extensively, including in New York, and has received over 75 awards, including Phillips Mills Honored Artist Award in 2015. His work is at Gallery Piquel. Richard studied at Hamilton College and the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art. He also has exhibited extensively, including at the Philadelphia Museum of Art and Woodmere, Woodmere Art Museum. In addition to many other awards, Richard was the Phillips Mill Honored Artist in 2013. His work is at Honey Clark Gallery and Patricia Hutton Gallery. Gentlemen, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you both here. Thank you, Laura. Okay, well, let, let's find out right away. Tell us the story of how you met. Richard, you go first, please. Um. I was kind of intimidated by Chessar. Uh, he was uh, a, a presence in the art world and in the Coriel Gallery. So I didn't speak to him for about three years. And then all of a sudden he showed up at my store and bought some custom furniture from me. And uh, all of a sudden, like osmosis, we were inseparable and in consultation to, well, uh, until this point, I was going to say until the rest of our lives, but who the hell knows. <laughs> That's the way it happened as far as I can remember, but I, my memory is all screwed up. So <laughs> give, give Chessor a chance. What do you think, Tom? Can you endorse that? I think that's exactly right. Um, it was uh, that moment, and we've just been really close friends ever, ever since. So, what was what was it that made you close friends? Was there a personal spark, or was it about the art, or how did that friendship grow? Well, I, for one, um. I would like to think I was perceptive, you know? And I think Tom Chesser is sui generis. He's unique. Uh, his work is intimate, it's poetic. It does a strange thing between realism and a kind of folk tales. Uh, uh, that are a combination of realism and uh, an incredible sophisticated folk tale. He's painting out of his dreaming, okay? And um, he's just gifted at birth. I don't know. And that, that's very, very, you know, unfair because I had to work like hell. <laughs> oh, I'm not allowed to say hell, excuse me. 
Tom, what do you think? I, I think that's so interesting what Richard said about your artwork, because I often feel like there's a, you know, there's a story, there's some sort of fantasy going on behind them. How do you feel about the description of your work? I, I love it. And especially coming from, uh, from Richard. I mean, is, Richard is, is a, a wonderful artist. And um, we, uh, our, our paintings are, uh, are different, but I think that the, uh, the, the essence of it that comes from, from our, our inner being uh, uh, is valid and um, is, is the same, very similar. Uh, although the paintings them, themselves are, are, are somewhat different. Um, and uh, uh, I, I just think that, uh, I think the world of uh, Richard's work and, and uh, I, 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 I think, I, correct me if I'm uh, wrong, Richard, but I think that when we're uh, conceiving of a painting that we're, what we're seeing is coming from here, from, from in, inside of us, uh, rather than strictly what we're seeing on the outside with her, with our eyes. Um, and um, it just, uh, it, it gives, uh, uh, it, it, it gives a, um, a sense of mystery uh, to Richard's work. And uh, uh, something I want to mention uh, about Richard's work, um, you, you can look at Richard's work and remain with it for a long time and see different things. You're not seeing the same image that you're, you're looking at. You discover, you, in, in viewing Richard's work, you're, you're actually um, seeing new things. Old, uh, all the time that you're you're looking at it, um, so I, I think that's wonderful. You, you're discovering new things just while you're you're watching it. We we take both of us light years to paint anything. Yeah. Uh, we're not very spontaneous. Well, we're going to look at your work in a minute, and I think the attention to detail that both of you um, exhibit in your work and the care that your work shows uh, can certainly justify if you take a little bit of time. But Richard, what do you think of what Tom just said? You gave him a nice compliment. And now he's giving you a nice compliment. Uh, is it really the artwork that's the foundation of your friendship, or is it you know, your friends and you happen to have art in common. Which came first? What do you think? Um, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, I wish I had an answer that was succinctly cogent, but I don't. Um, I don't know. I, I admire him as a human being. He's humble. He's so generous. He's caring. Uh, I couldn't ever wish for a better friend and also he, he's got uh, uh, perspicacity, he has got judgment. Um, uh, uh, there's nobody I better consult to criticize my work and uh, be instructive to me. And uh, um, yeah, that's about it. All right, well, very good. We're gonna take a look at your artwork. We've got questions that are already piling in. Um, I, to the people who are as, asking questions, I'm going to try to work these in as we get to those topics. So if you've got a question already up and I don't get right to it, it's not because I haven't seen it. We're going to get to it in the context of the discussion. Um, and I also want to say that we're talking about friendship, but we love to look at artwork and, you know, we have a lot of artists who come uh, to these programs and like to talk about the details as well. So we can still get into some of the technical, but uh, even though we're talking about friendship. So Jen, if you would, please. Yep, here we go. All right, Jen found these two paintings uh, and 
I think it, <laughs> there's one of Rich, Richard's painting, Junction of Three, Lambertville and Tom Chester's Gordon's Alley. And I think you can see, gentlemen, why Jen chose these two. Um, it's sort of a view over the rooftops of what I believe to be the same spire. Is that right? Yep. Yes. And uh, I'm so now, Tom, you and I talked the other day and you didn't think that your work is very similar. And I hate to be argumentative. What do you think looking at these two? Would you think you've had an influence on each other? I, th I think that uh, I, I think that these two particular paintings are are, are very similar. Um, I I'm thinking of our work en masse that 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 you you'll see the difference that there there is um, the the similarity is is coming from. Uh, inside both of us, that's uh, that's how I feel. The, these the, these two examples are uh, uh, they're very similar in in, in appearance. Uh, I would I would agree with you there. That's right, and we we picked them out for that reason. What do you think, Richard? Um, I think Tom goes for atmospherics and I see something out there um, that conforms to a kind of construct that's already preconceived in my head. And I was walking along the canal and I just happened to see this conjunction. And I was, you know, I like the way that they converged and uh, I like the crisscrossing the pyramidal geometry, uh, the diagonals, all that kind of thing. So, um, I, and you can see the romance in his work and mine is more, uh, I don't know what it is, but it's um, more empirical, more, uh, more interested in abstraction, I guess. But Stom, Tom's work is always abstract. So. Uh, I, I don't want to um, dim diminish his aptitude for that. Well, I love Richard that you said that Tom's work here is romantic because when I I wouldn't have come to that conclusion on my own, but I see what you're talking about um, when I look at these two paintings. That there's a softness there and the atmospherics of the cloud. Whereas I notice in your work, you are very interested in um, architecture, if I may say, and I'm looking at the light on both the steeple and this um, lighter colored wall with the red detail. And that light, that sort of clear clarion light is, uh, it seems to me characteristic of your work. What do you think? Well, thank you very much. Um, I'll, I'll be uh, accommodating to your view. <laughs> All right, Tom, any more thoughts on these two and we'll, um, we'll go forward. No, I think it's, uh, I think we, we covered that, that, yeah. Good, I think kudos to Jen for finding these two together. Uh, Jen, I think we have a question from Robert Beck. Yep, sorry, I had to unmute myself. Uh, Robert wants to know what the two of you look for in your own work, Richard and Tom. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, well, uh, what I look forward for uh, is the um, I, I look at the the, the value. Uh, values are very important to me, and, and and when I say values, what I'm talking about uh, is the uh, light and darkness uh, of of. Uh, of the uh, the painting that that's very important to me, and um, uh, I I think in everything I do I try to find balance uh, that would be chromatic balance would be the value 
uh, balance. Um, if if the the painting calls for it, I, I may have uh, just a little bit of lit areas, uh, which would be the values, and a, a larger amount of the uh, darker values. And it, it just depends on the subject matter. But I think I, th I think that um, I think the balance, this balance, balance of um, masses, the actual objects in in the painting, um, uh, playing against each other, is is what I I like to do, and I like uh, to insert people uh, uh, when I when I can um, for that to give it. Um, a kind of a feel a look. So that, that's, thanks for the question, Bob. It's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a good question and hard to, hard to answer, but <laughs> that's the best I can do. Very good. Well, why don't we look at some of your work, Tom, and then Richard, when we're looking at your work, we're going to come back to um, Robert Beck's question about what you look for. But I'd like to encourage you, since this is about friendship, I'd love to hear the two of you um, chime in rather than listening to me talk about your work, if the two of you would, I think that would be much more interesting. So Tom, here is a beautiful painting. I think it shows the detail and the time that you put into um, work. What can you tell us about this? Oh, that's, that's uh, my wife, Joanne, and, uh, and our a dog, Asta. Um, and uh, it was, it was a, on a small lake in Maine. And uh, I just wanted to get the, the feel of, um, I wanted to get the feel of the light. Uh, that, that's what I was after uh, there. And uh, another friend of of mine, I I, I gave the, the painting to Joanne uh, as soon as I, I finished it. But uh, I had uh, another uh, art friend uh, that would uh, every time he would see it. He wanted me to put it in a, a, a show in New York, and uh, the show is hard to get in, and uh, it it got in, and he and he was right. He worked on my, my uh, friend worked on 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 me to uh, to submit that, and uh, so, so he 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 was right. Well, there's. I mean, it's really a perfect painting. Richard, when you go and visit Tom in his studio, um, do, you, do you give him feedback on his work? What would you say to him about a painting like this? Um, I would say it was atypical. Uh, it's very realistic and it's very personal. And, you know, it, uh, intimations of adoration there, right? And it's his wife. Um, it's it's not what I would consider the, you know, when you, even 25 yards away, you can tell a Tom Chesser out of a whole wall of other paintings. Uh, if I did, wasn't, uh, if I didn't have a long time affinity with this particular painting, uh, I probably wouldn't recognize it as a chess art. And what what uh, helps that maybe not be what I'm doing is that um, that it's an egg tempera. Uh, this is an egg tempera painting, uh, which changes its character to a certain extent. Very good. All right, Jen, let's see the next one. A lot of motion here, Tom. Tell us about this painting. Uh, There's a little story behind that painting. Uh, 
That was in my uh, older son's uh, apartment and, and it was celebration of his birthday. And he had a lot of his friends, um, uh, many of them musicians. And uh, the, the, the way this painting uh, started was, um, it was a, a, a smaller version of this. Uh, I gave uh, to uh, Richard as a gift I believe it was on um, your birthday, Richard. And we, we both looked at it and um, we agreed that it would be a, a good subject matter uh, to enlarge, you to just uh, do it, paint it again and make it larger. And um, so um, the painting, uh, the, uh, a picture of, of that painting, uh, 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 a person that was uh, a, a potential uh, a, a customer of it. Um, uh, how, how to express this? Um, uh, a third person was there and the third person wanted to know why the piano player uh, was shifting to one cheek, if if you uh, if if you look on it, and uh, I, I explained that uh, if 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 you're changing at, at the, at the octave and you have to go higher or lower on the keyboard, you have if if you have a bench, you just slide down. If you have to move your your body to to the left to the right, and uh, um, and uh, uh, with, with the bench you have to <laughs> go go to one cheek or the other to 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 reach where you know where where you're going, and it sold at that that minute. It just it sold because so, uh, the person that uh, purchased the painting. Uh, his son was a piano player, and he he said, "You're absolutely right. That's 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 the reason for the the shift from one cheek to the other. With a bench, you just slide you just slide your whole body down a little bit." I recognize that motion, um, Jen. I think we've got a question from Rosemary. Okay, Rosemary says, hello, Richard and Tom. Through the years, it seems that many artists to have relationships with other artists. How does a deep friendship with another artist impact your work and the way you work? Richard, why don't you start off for us? Well, uh, I think I think there's an intensity that abides with the individual if, if they're truly dedicated to what they're doing. And that's intrinsic. It's not something that's, that's uh, amenable to change by a friendship or a relationship. I think the friendship part is integral to looking at each other's work and, you know, saying things that are involving uh, so that you, you share each other's work and appreciate that intensity at the same time so that whatever critical evaluation is made, it's always honoring that individual identity. That's a beautiful answer. Yes, I agree completely. Couldn't, couldn't be put any better. <laughs> All right, then um, uh, Jen, I think we have a question from Jean Underwood. Uh, Jean said you mentioned you spend a lot of time on a painting. Do you often make studies before tackling the final painting? 
I think both, I'm not sure which artist that's directed at, but I think you both were saying that you spend a lot of time on a painting. So we'll put that out for both of you. Whether you, you make study first. Go ahead, Tom. Um, I, yes, if I don't, if I don't uh, make uh, studies and plans for it, uh, and I, I use uh, uh, just a regular um, number three pencil and uh, a paper. Uh, I, I try to get acid-free uh, uh, paper, uh, drawing paper. Uh, so if it, you know, sometimes the, the, uh, the, the sketch and the plans will hold on their own. So, you know, I don't want them deteriorating. Uh, and uh, so uh, I find the most important part of the pencil when I'm when I'm doing the the, uh, the the sketch or the plans for it is the eraser part of the of the, the pencil. Richard, do you make a plan a sketch before you start a work? I, I, um, I kind of incubate the damn thing for ages and um, think about it and consider it and try to reduce it to essentials and um, distill it in all, all ways, including trying to interpret the distillation of light and, and, and the whole organic unity of the thing. And I, and I go through a whole bunch of stages of, in the development of the idea. Um, uh, and I, I hate the, the development and I love to get to the actual painting. And it's not all so predetermined, you know, I will take advantage of accidents when they occur if they're fortuitous to the end product, you know, the beneficial uh, to, to, to my intent. So if you may, if you're both making studies, do you consult each other ahead of time and get some input before you go forward or is that? No. No. That's right. We, we, if, if we do anything we um, just show what our, our sketches or uh, what what our our plans are but we don't uh, no we don't we don't uh, we don't consult on any ideas it's very important to be invested in each other's authenticity so you don't want to influence it you want it to be strictly your own paintings. Each of you are doing your own paintings. Absolutely. But you give feedback on the result. That's interesting. Okay, Jen, let's take a look at some of Richard's work. We've got a bunch of works of both of them and uh, we're having a nice time chatting here. I wanna make sure we show a bunch more uh, paintings. Uh, I'm, uh, you want me to talk? Yes, please, Richard. Uh, this is a... Uh composition uh, I did from a guy's backyard who had doves in his barn that he catered to uh, with great affection. And I had some uh, personal um, communication with him. And uh, I, I think just like one, two, one, two, three, four buildings in there overlapping, juxtaposed, contiguous, um, I think um, it, uh, uh, there's a basketball hoop there uh, and a swing at the bottom. And I, those things I kept, because uh, I, I like the, the whole batch of horizontals, triangles, verticals, repetitions, um, you know, and the abstraction of the whole thing. I mean, even the chimney reiterates the windows and the steeple. I mean, I'm not religious. I don't know why all these 
churches keep showing up. And <laughs> I, I guess they must be a good compositional element. They catch the light. I think you've got a, you, I see you, Richard, often looking over or between buildings. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm trying to understand that, but I find it very intriguing. We'll see some more of those as we go forward. I see you shaking, nodding your head, Tom. Oh yeah, this, uh, the, uh, the, the, the tension uh, and mystery that uh, Richard creates uh, with, with uh, when he does, when he chooses to, to do that. Yeah, I, I agree. Okay, and before, well, sorry, Jen, can we go back real quick? Well, we can look at it this one too, but um, on the previous painting, these both have really beautiful frames on them. Yeah, they were done by Francis Tucker, um, who was an incredible man. I, I, I um, was directed to him for framing by a, 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 a a well-known artist in Philadelphia. He said, probably you won't even talk to you. So I, I called him up and I said, look, I, I'd like to see if you could do some framing for me. And then so I, I showed up at the door there and here was uh, uh, the farmer in Grant Woods, American Gothic uh, by, you know, and um, uh, I said, hi, I, you know, I'm the guy that called you. And I said, I have a painting in the car, maybe you could frame it for me. So he said, okay, come on in. And I brought the painting and we didn't even talk. We didn't even look at the painting. We started talking and all of a sudden we were uh, immersed somehow. And finally we looked at the painting. So, well, I can see you're the real thing. And he said, um, what kind of frame do you want me to put on it? I said, you got carte blanche, buddy. Just do it, because I, I knew his his framing work from another gallery I was in at the time, and um, uh, so he did the most beautiful hand carved things. This is one of the more, more simple things he did, but he did the most beautiful, uh, wonderful hand carved thing, especially for the the the. The, the big panoramic views that I did of uh, the river towns um, along the Delaware. And God, he hardly charged me a pittance. He carved his name on the back of each frame. And, you know, it was heaven. And he and I would go out. I mean, he was uh, a, a teacher at the University of the Arts and also. Um, he was a painter himself, and he also worked for the Philadelphia Museum of Art and innovated different ways of hanging shows in the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Anyway, we would go out uh, to restaurant, restaurants. Nobody would ever know we're there. They were like in people's houses and stuff and have wonderful lunches together. And we'd walk down the street and everybody would say, Hey, Francis, how you doing? <laughs> well, they're marvelous frames. I think you did very and this, well. And this man went through hell because he was at war in Korea. He was the one that crossed over the parallel and went and found the enemy's sights so that, that mortars could be aimed at them. Mm -hmm. um, he was crawling in the mud. He was in trench warfare. He came back home, had tuberculosis. Then went to the Defense Man Academy for a while. And then his history continued as previously described. Well, there's another good um, friendship forged in art. Mm -hmm. uh, Jen, we have a question from Marvin Pilon, which I think uh, is appropriate as we're looking at flat out Frenchtown. Uh, yes, Marvin said, Richard, you have often said your work is abstract, and yet it depicts real settings or objects. How do you define abstract in your work? Good well, um, I, I, it's just, you know, uh, um, perusing 
and all of a sudden say, oh my God, look at that. I can use that and it fits into a particular kind of construct. And in this case, I appreciate the fact that um, it's, uh, when I painted it, there was this recognition of the flat of the canvas, and that's why the title is derived. Um, and I love the, the confluence of the old buildings and the new buildings. Obviously, part of it is a gas station. Um, it, it just totally aroused my stimulation because it was just there, available as, as a total organic unit, uh, unity and an abstraction. Let's take another look at uh, Richard's picture. Picture is another picture of Richard's. And while Jen is pulling that up, I'll read a question from Jim Feld. Um, do you ever work together designing the same painting or actually painting as a team, sort of a brother's Hildeprint? Never. Never? Never. Why not, Tom? We've already done this. Uh, I don't know. That's that's the way the way it is. We're uh, we're exp expressing our our own concepts, uh, and uh, you just we you just you have to be focused and isolated on what you're doing uh, rather than blending it. Uh, with another artist's uh, viewpoint. Right. That was good. All right, Richard, this here, I, this is um, a favorite of mine. I admire many works by both of you. I think this one is so fascinating. You've painted, you know, the, the place in between the buildings, uh, which I think is just a fascinating perspective. And also, I like it for this uh, conversation because we're talking about friendship and these two buildings look <laughs> like they're friends. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I kind of animate in a humanoid way. Um, uh, um, the buildings, I, I mean, I would hope I do some of that, you know. I used to do it more so before I got too geometrical, I guess. Um, I was at the Milford Market and I passed this thing over and over again. And one day the light was uh, such a, so holy cow, look at that. And uh, I just love the contiguity of the buildings, uh, uh, as you already um, said, and, uh, the, the, and the mystery of the light uh, revealing a, a secret place behind a, 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 some kind of a garden, you know, and uh, yeah, and it, it's just one of those things like, there it is, it's a painting, God damn it. Uh oh, I'm not supposed to say anything bad. We All didn't right, hear it. We didn't huh? hear it. We didn't hear that, Richard. Tom, <laughs> what do you think? What kind of feedback would you give Richard on this painting? When you're up there in your studio talking and he's just showed you this painting, what would you say to Richard? Well, I, I would tell him uh, that uh, I loved it. I, uh, the, the, uh, what I was talking about before, I, um, there's surprises in, in Richard's work. Um, the the yellow door uh, against the um, the darkness between between the the uh, well let, let me put it this way the yellow door is totally isolated from the uh, color scheme. Of the rest of the, of the painting, in, in my in my view, and and that is very difficult to do, and Richard can do it, and and he's and he to me he's playing that yellow door 
in the context of the entire painting, but the emerald green strip of lawn between the two is also interacting with that with that yellow door and that that just fascinates me how, how richard can do that hmm. amazing painting but i i agree with you laura it's a, it's a beautiful painting i love to hear you talk about it i'm, I'm gonna jump in if you don't mind and say, I, I've been looking at both of your work quite a bit recently and I looked at it quite a bit uh, as we were preparing for the art show last year and um, the, both of your works just drew me back and back. I see, maybe it's a surface similarity. I look at the buildings that you're painting with these um, clabbered sides and the detail that both of you, the care you spend on uh, these buildings. And I'm just so impressed but there is a different perspective, such as you talked about, Richard, in maybe the character of the, the artist gaze. Jen, let's go to um, uh, let's go to Tom's picture. Here we go. Edge of town. Uh, this one does not have as much of the detail of the side of the building, but it's another architectural um, view of the one of these river towns, I take it, Tom, that yeah, we're all so familiar with. Yeah. And yet it is, as Richard, you said earlier, it's a romantic view. Well, it's, a, it's, it's poetical, it's mystic in a way. Uh, it's got all kinds of virtuosity to it. It's uh, it's unidentifiable, uh, ineffable kind of a, atmospheric there it's just uh i you know it's tom chesser <laughs> tom what would you like to say about this piece uh well i i i wanted it to be um a cold like a feeling of, of coldness so that's why I, I put the little little figure uh walking uh with like they're walking against a, a cold, cold wind. Uh, but what I have to say uh, with the uh, with this painting is one of the most difficult things was which win uh, uh, windows to uh, light up because uh, <laughs> you, you you can't light them all all up because it becomes meaningless. So um, the most I, most people, when they maybe come home at night, they hit the the uh, the, the bottom bottom floor first and turn the turn the lights on. And so that's where you, you see why I I, I, uh, I lit that. But you can't. The other thing, important thing, is you can't uh, you can't create a, a pattern. It, it, it had those lights have to be random uh, to uh, you know to really have have any any uh, meaning to it. That makes sense. And you said earlier that you like to put uh, characters in uh, people in when you can. Jen, if we could see the image of the pickup truck, which I find deeply <laughs> mysterious. Marmette. May I just say <laughs> one other thing before the pickup sure. truck? Sorry, Jen, if we could go back, please. Uh, the, um, I think I'm marking this. Uh, uh, I, I, I had to, there was, I, I don't know what association it was, but it was a, a, an association from um, Lambertville, and um, and they they had had to have a, 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 a letterhead on top of a newsletter that they would put out, and so they asked if they could put that picture, you know, as as the header, and um, so. 
a, a lot of people came back and told me and responded to, to, to me what, what that they lived in that in one of those buildings and they told me the history of the of the buildings the tall building was a, used to be a bar and how I guess it was uh, a, a little tough times uh, and uh, and they would help the, the people in the bar would help uh, the neighbors it, and and it turned out to be um, a, a very like nostalgic loving uh, tone to the to the whole thing mm, that's very nice nice association yeah to, to get the, the history of of uh, each one of those those buildings it, art is personal Jen, I have to know the story of the painting with the pickup truck because I, I make up all sorts of stories in my mind. What is happening here, Tom? That, the pickup truck, um, uh, Monhegan Island, which is an artist um, island, basically. It's known for it go, going back to the, uh, the past century, the artists have gravitated to a, sort of a artist, artist colony. And um, I, I did the sketches uh, during the daytime and I didn't care for it too much and I, and I set it aside. And um, about a year, year or two later, I just you know had it sitting there and I thought, this would be a much better painting uh, if it uh, if it was at night. And um, the purpose of the flatbed truck is um, that truck would come in as the as the tourist would come in. Uh, that flatbed truck they, they would uh, put their uh, luggage on, and it would take them to the the, the few hotels that are are there places to stay. And um, I was fascinated by the, uh, <laughs> the sources of light uh, uh, and their different nature, the, the moon and um, the artificial light of the, of the post on the extreme, extreme right. Um, and um, the light over the interior of the cab with the dog was um, was uh, sitting in and the dome light uh, on the in interior. So I guess they're counting them up. It's uh, uh, three, three different kinds of, three different kinds of light. Richard, thoughts about this for Tom? Well, I, I think um, he's, being very literal with it, uh, and the the lighting is spectacular. Um, but he he wasn't accounting for um, the suspense of mystery in there, and maybe it's um, one of those things that just remains forever ineffable, I don't know. Um, and, and maybe it doesn't really matter because um, the world is magic. It's, uh, it's incomprehensible really, if you, if you really think about it. I mean, um, yeah. Yeah, I think that that's really nicely said too. I love the mystery of this. I wanna know what they're all looking off at and why the dog is in the driver's seat. It's it's a marvelous painting. <laughs> well, in real life, the dog really was in the driver's seat. <laughs> that, that, the one thing that's on there that is is real is that dog. <laughs> and that, it's uh, and it's just counterpoint to the direction that the people are looking at. They they appear to be waiting for something and the dog is looking back at it and waiting for them to do so, to do something. 
It's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, um, Jen, let's go take a look at um, Richard's portrait, waiting for my, searching for my wife, if I will. Richard, you do a beautiful portrait. You, you paint a lot of architectural subjects and yet the few portraits I've seen are just really lovely. Um, well, I, I, I had some positive reinforcement. Um, uh, interspersed with myriad negative reinforcement, <laughs> uh, but uh, at the academy, but I, 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 I seem to have had uh, some reward in saying that my, that my portraits were good. And um, I love portraiture, but um, um, I, I only like to paint people that you know, I have a vested interest in, I guess, and that I can um, find some secret thing. And in this case, um, this was uh, from Seattle. And um, it's called Searching for My Wife. And the reason that I did that was um, it's uh, a look in her eye, acknowledging our secret, intimate love, and very, very hard for me to 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 think that I that I got close to it. But you know, I do the best I can. Well, it's there in her eyes. What do you think, Tom? I I well, uh, I think. It's, it's a perfect picture of Stana. Uh, I I love the I love the uh, it being uh, backlit as it is, and I just Richard has a way with his colors and his, his values um, that uh, that I think are are incredibly subtle and beautiful and um and 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 he with Stana, i mean it's it's a a, a a wonderful accurate picture of of Stana and and uh, and and being able to incorporate the the subtle colors of the background with the, the backlit figure of, of, of Sana is quite an accomplishment. Oh, it's marvelous. We have um, a few questions from uh, our, our guests here and I wanna kind of go through them a little bit quickly because we I'd like to look at more artwork but I also wanna respect the um, questions from our audience. So maybe we can take care of a couple of them quickly. Um, James and Jen, I'm going to go through these for time since we're coming up on the hour. James Taylor wants to know, how do you know when a painting is finished? You don't. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. That is true. That is you fart around with it until you're exhausted. And the it's an act of attrition that cancels any further performance. And, you know, you best turn it against the wall and never look at it again. <laughs> you, it sounds like you agree, Tom. It's, it's yes, perfect, perfect answer. Uh, we have a couple of people asking, um, do you paint from photos or real life? Um, I'll, I'll take a stab at that. Um, there's two great teachers, nature and the museum. You have to read the way the light reveals the true flesh of things out there every day. My wife is my chauffeur, so I just, uh, all I do is make those kind of uh, inspections. 
if um, if you use photography, you you can't let it use you. You have to use it. Photography is beneficial in the fact that it gives you infinite time of contemplation. But if you haven't acquainted yourself with the way things work in the world as they were revealed by the sun or dimmed by the clouds, uh, you're not really worth your soul. And, and like um, Cezanne said, if you take a step to the left or step to the right or forward or back, everything changes. Well, you can take a bunch of photographs so that you can amalgamate a whole bunch of things and, and make a, a new amalgam. Uh, that's interesting in itself. Sometimes, sometimes um, it's not, it's about internalizing things. It, it's not about being if you generate an, a, a, a copy of a photo, you ain't saying a damn thing. You're not, you got no depth or intensity as far as I'm concerned, but that's just my opinion. I agree. Uh, I, um, I, I think uh, maybe um, uh, 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 an answer uh, to that not an answer, uh, uh, an addition uh, to it, in, in, in my case is um, I was in Maine and um, I, di I didn't have my uh, camera with me. And I saw a brown dog in a, a completely yellow field of weeds. And it was it was wonderful. And so I, I went, we were staying in a cottage and I, I went, I, I got the camera and I took a, a picture of it and um, it just, I, I got out of, out of the car and took the picture and it, it was nothing. It just had nothing to it. So I realized what the difference was. When I first saw it, I uh, I was moving, and, and I was just looking out the, the out the window, and that's what I, I that's what made the the picture, and so I went back, and I figured it out I had to be going to the peril of other drivers. I had to be going about twenty miles an hour, and take the picture in motion and, and where, where everything was just blurred and, and it just gave a total different idea to me to how to paint the painting. All right, I'm gonna go a little bit longer uh, because I wanna get these questions in. Um, Cindy asked Tom, uh, Tom has a varied medium that you've used over the years. Do you decide what medium to use or subject of the piece before you begin? Yeah, I, 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 uh, I, I tend to, I tend to um, a, a paint in a tempera regardless of the subject for a certain period of time. And it's, it's a very, um, difficult medium uh, to use, very time consuming. And then I'll just say, well, I got to try something, do something else, oil, and then, and then I'll switch to oil for a length of time. I, I, I usually don't do it in, in relationship to the subject matter. It's just how I'm feeling of, you know, about using it. All right. And um, Richard, you. sorry. Richard, um, do you ponder at times the legacy of your work in years to come? And if so, what impact do you hope that will be? That's from Rick Balukas. We'll ask Richard and then we'll ask Tom. No, there's just only one answer for that. 
Oh, you can't compete with dust. <laughs> okay. I very succinct and to the point. Tom, can you think about your legacy? I I I like to think that my my paintings, my, my biggest uh uh I, I, I don't know, the thrill is the wrong word, but feeling good about it is when I hear that the same painting has passed through three generations uh, in, in, in one family. That, that to me is the thing about longevity and, you know, what, what's thought of me. I, I just want somebody some young guy to look at my paintings and say oh, i i know what he, he was trying to do <laughs> which, I, which I, I, i've done i've done myself gazing in an older picture well gentlemen bill miller says don't go this has been too much fun these gentlemen are terrific i i have to endorse that comment um i've enjoyed talking to you so much this hour went by extremely quickly Please come back again uh, anytime. We'd love to talk to you. I wish we could have seen more of your work tonight. Jen has put your website um, URLs in the chat so that people can go. There are some marvelous paintings. I, I think I'm gonna you know, stalk you a little bit so I can talk to you about them because I really wanted to talk to you about them. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Thank you, Laura. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Jen. Jen, welcome, thanks. Richard. You're welcome, Tom. Thank you, Jen. I thank you both. And I thank you. Uh, the people. Oh, thank you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Appearing yeah. with a malefactor like me. You know, thank you. <laughs> Richard, you most of all, I thank you. <laughs> Richard Lennox, Tom Chesser, uh, incomparable. Thank you very much to Jen McHugh, our executive producer. Thank you for our show producer, Dennis Riley, who produced this show. Uh, thank all of you for coming tonight and spending some of your Sunday evening with us. We hope you'll come back next Sunday. The next uh, art talk is next Sunday at five, May 2nd, when we're very excited to have Laura Igo, curator from the Michener Museum. She worked on the exhibition of the Lenfest collection that had so many great paintings from the Bucks County tradition. We are not going to talk about the usual suspects like Garber and Redfield. Instead, Laura is going to talk about the New Hope modernists who were also important local con or contributors mm -hmm. to American art history. And she says these artists are becoming um, ever more collectible. So we hope you'll come back and join us for that. This is Phillips Mill Art Talk, and I'm Laura Walmack. Good night.